As always, we appreciate you checking in. Today, we're going to spend a, a little time on our Spider-9 housing calculator. This is a tool that you can download off our website that will help you build your Spider-9 housing. Just head to spidertracks.com and click on support, Spider-9, and that first link should be housing calculator. On this page, there'll be a link for a front calculator and a rear calculator. Those links will download an Excel file. So disclaimer number one, you will need Excel or a program that can open up Excel files. So numbers for Mac, Google Sheets, something of the like. So I've downloaded both the front and the rear calculators. I'm going to switch screens and we're going to dive right in. So when you open up that first calculator, the front calculator, this is Excel, and it will look a little overwhelming. So don't worry about it. I'm going to walk you through this step by step. It's really not that bad. Disclaimer number two. This calculator is designed for forward engine vehicles, so the pinion is going to live on this side of the housing center line. If you are trying to build a mid-engine or a rear engine vehicle and you're trying to use this calculator, stop. Don't do it. You're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. So just give us a call or send us an email and we'll, we'll help you with that. And the next disclaimer is going to be on the shaft lengths. So if you already built your Spider 9 and you didn't use the calculator, and now all you're trying to do is come up with an SA or an SB measurement for your shafts, don't try to reverse engineer your housing and use this calculator to come up with those shaft lengths. It can get you in trouble as well. It's not worth it. There are far easier ways of coming up with shaft lengths, and we'll make a separate video to show you how to do that in the event you already built your Spider 9 without the calculator and all you need are shaft lengths. So we, what we really want to focus on is you're building a Spider 9 from scratch, a forward engine. That's what this calculator is intended for. So the first piece of information, and again, up here are just three pieces of information that you need. That's all you're going to be entering, uh, just so you know. Everything else is going to be calculated for you. So the first piece is a WMS. That's wheel mount surface. And that's just where your wheel is going to bolt on to the axle on both sides. And that's WMS or wheel mount surface. And we're going to go ahead and build Derek West's front axle housing. It's going to be 70 inches. A is just taking that pinion from one side and moving over to the wheel mount surface. This is uh, for, let's say, a US build. This is going to be that driver side. So A. For Derek, it's going to be 25 and a quarter. And then the last bit of information, and when you get to it, you're going to go ahead and get this little uh, warning here. I'll go over that with you. But it's the locker gap. And you, you only have two options to pull down. So it's either half inch or one and a half. All that's doing is it's setting what the gap is between the shafts. And that's going to change those shaft lengths. So half inch is the tightest that we allow in the calculator. That would be for what we're calling an automatic locker or a spool for what it's worth. So you think a uh, Detroit locker, Gearworks locker, or a spool, you're going to use that half inch number. But if you're running an air locker, like an Air B, you're going to have a bigger gap. That's inch and a half. Don't cheat this one. Don't do it for an inch and a half and then run a, a different kind of locker. Uh, there is no one size fits all here, so be very careful. You do have to pick what locker you're running, and the shafts really need to work for that locker. The stuff is not really interchangeable. You can run into troubles. And then when you click on here, we get this must read. So I'll just go over this with you real quick. We're making the assumption that from the pinion center line to the center line of where the shafts are right here, that distance is two and an eighth inches. It's a very common measurement for a 4, 9, and 10 inch. And more likely than not, the locker that you have is, is going to be using that dimension or something very close to that. If, for instance, you're running some one-off, custom, top secret, prototype, spool locker that doesn't exist in the market, maybe that's not 2 and an eighth inches. Maybe it's something different. And if it is, those shaft lengths will not be right. So be, be careful about that. But if you're running what we would consider to be a very, very typical nine and 10 inch uh, style product for lockers and, and all, you'll, you'll be using that two and an eighth. That's what the calculator assumes. So you'll be set there. When you key in those three pieces of information, that's it. 
Uh, everything else is calculated for you, and I'll, I'll walk you through that now. So B is just the other side of A. That's a very simple measurement, so that one's not so bad. The next one, TA and TB, I would say that's the most important bit that you're going to get from this calculator, and I'll explain that. So TA and TB is demonstrating to you how to cut your housing tubes. So you would hook your tape measure inside that housing cutout, hook the tape measure where the third member drops in. So you're hooking it right there. You're bringing the tape measure out and you're marking your TA, which in this case is 10.938. And again, hooking your tape measure on this side, bringing it out, marking it, and that's gonna be your TB measurement, which is 28 and a half. PA and PB is more of the same. We have some builders that actually bolt on face plates here and have a, a, a marking or let's say a hook for what would be their theoretical pinion center line. And so instead of using TA and TB, they use PA and PB, but it's the same idea. And TA and TB is pretty common. So most guys are gonna be doing that. But if you had a fancy fixture here and you were grabbing off a theoretical pinion, same thing, PA is where you would mark and then PB is where you would mark to cut your housing tube. SA and SB are the shaft lengths. So center of U-joint to end of shaft, and center of U-joint to end of shaft. It's gonna get you the shaft lengths there. And then we do let you know what the pinion offset is. So in this case, negative is gonna represent driver. So it's a driver side pinion offset of uh, nine and three quarter. And that's uh, the pinion as it relates to the center of what the wheel mount surface would have been. And uh, that makes sense because A is quite a bit shorter than B. And so that pinion is going to come over this way. And, and yes, that adds up. So that's a quick rundown on a front calculator. Before we move over to the rear, there's just one little bit I want to make sure we cover before we, we leave the, the front calculator. For older knuckles, knuckles that don't have integrated stops built into them, uh, you press on that inner knuckle and you leave an eighth inch gap. So where that knuckle would have been flush with the tube, you actually space it out from there. So don't press it all the way on. And that gap is an eighth inch and you would fill that with weld and you would fill this with weld. But that eighth inch moves that knuckle out a little bit. And all of these calculations assume that. If you have a newer knuckle, it'll have an integrated stop built into it. So you don't have to worry about this. You would press on the knuckle until it stops and the integrated stop accounts for that eighth inch for you. So this note here is just for older knuckles that don't have integrated stops on the inner knuckle when you press them on the tube. So heads up there. Okay, let's switch over to the rear. It's very similar, actually incredibly similar. You're entering in three bits of information just like the front, wheel mount surface. And in this case, Derek is running a 66 and three quarter. You're putting in an A dimension for Derek, he's running a 31.25, 31 and a quarter. And for the locker gap, he is running a spool as well. And that's it. So put in those three pieces of information and you get your housing calculations. So B, again, other side of A. TA and TB, same idea. You hook a tape measure to the housing cutout for the third member, bring it out, mark your TA. That's where you cut your housing tube and TB. That's where you're gonna cut your housing tube. PA and PB, again, redundant, but if you have that fancy fixture plate, you can use those dimensions instead. SA and SB, shaft lengths, and uh, those, there's no U-joint, so end of shaft to uh, end of shaft for SA and SB, and the pinion offset. And what's fun about the pinion offset here, which is you know worth mentioning for, say, builders that are new for nine and 10 inch setups, the pinion is not centered with the center line of the axle shafts. It, it looks like it does here. You see the pinion is over there and the center line is over here. So to get equal length axle shafts, you actually end up with a pinion offset of two and an eighth inch, which was that number that we were warning you about before. And that's where that comes from. So this would be a passenger uh, pinion offset of two and an eighth inches. And that's how Derek is achieving equal length shafts. And that's it. I hope that uh, provides some help on your next Spider-9 build. Of course, if you have any questions at all, feel free to give us a call or send us an email anytime. Thanks for checking in.